Internet, it's me, Hewlett, with another DGeek Diary for you, and today I'm doing a thing called Follow-Up Friday. I know I've got a million videos that I could be following up on, but I have chosen uh, fanatic hairs and nascent notches as my, as my target. Uh, because you guys have come up with some amazing comments, amazing information, and you've got me all inspired about this idea of getting kids to go from gamers to programmers, and how do we work with their little minds so that they um, that they uh, they enjoy that transition. So there's a bunch of stuff that's come up. I've got a bunch of notes here. I'm going to just pull them up for you. First off, like how do we get into it? One of the great suggestions that came up right away was from Josh Walroth from PC Perspectives, and of course his perspective is from the hardware standpoint, and I get it. Build your own computer, get all the pieces, put them together, uh, install an operating system, fantastic. There's nothing more inspiring than walking into a room and going like, that computer that you're using is mine. I made it, I built that from scratch, did it myself. I've done it, I love it, it's amazing. It's a perfect way in for kids. Thank you, Josh, genius. Um, also, um, uh, so the spare wheel, um, uh, thank you very much for commenting, um, suggests that you do the same thing but with Raspberry Pi, which is basically, you know, it's the Arduino thing, where these little programmable um, uh, mini computers that can be attached to sensors or, or, or robotics or and all sorts of things, basically. It's like little computer kits and electronics. So basically you're getting into electronics and programming, seeing the connection. Uh, again, I think the hardware approach, very, very, very smart. And lastly, Emma Foster, Suggested the most obvious one because there's a pile of it behind the um, camera right now, which is Lego Mindstorms. Like it's just this perfect example of building something fantastic um, out of Lego and then programming it. I have that. I'm, I'm, you know, like we do that. So, of course, that's a way of learning how to program and a way to love the idea of programming. You're programming a robot to shoot things or recognize colors and do things. It's genius. So, how to get kids into programming? Let them build things hands-on, but a great mix of hands-on and, and, and thinking and, and logic and stuff. So next up, uh, stories that make my case. Basically, stories that make me sh make, make everyone realize that I was right. Um, uh, HD and 3D, great kid. He's got some diary stuff. He's got some Let's Play stuff. You should check out his channel. Um, he was saying that he was so into gaming that he sort of wandered into a game company to see how they made it because he was so fascinated by how, you know, how long did it take to make Minecraft? How long does it to do, uh, how many people are involved in programming? All this kind of stuff. He, you know, he was so interested in gaming that he that he sort of wandered into the real world to see what was happening and sort of is, and is pursuing that. So, um, and also uh, Vanessa Arendt, Vanessa Arendt, um, was saying that her brother, same thing, totally into gaming. Uh, he had that passion for gaming and that led to him sort of peeling back the layers and getting into the programming side of it. And he's just finished up his um, his 3D animation uh, uh, classes at uh, in, in university now. So, um, or just about to. So congratulations, that's amazing, fantastic. Thank you, great stories. Um, and so we move on to the educational side. And this is kind of interesting because uh, Patty1971, thank you for your comment, was saying that she had a voluntary computer class that she could take at school. She went to take it, she's all excited because she does like Commodore 64 programming and all this kind of stuff. She gets in there, she's like faced by Pascal and all this like impenetrable wall of tech, uh, tech and, and um, and um, um, uh, you know syntax and stuff, and it totally threw her off. And I had exactly the same thing. I loved the whole idea of computers. I had the little Ladybird book of Lego, uh, the Ladybird um, uh, book of, of, of computers and and um, and, uh, and programming and all these uh, you know all these byte magazines and stuff. I get in there and I'm handed a bunch of punch cards to do programming on, like in, in Cobol or Fortran or whatever it was. And there's a beautiful little Mac sitting on the teacher's desk, but no, that's like a kid's toy. That's not really for programming. That's just like a it's a novel novelty type thing. So this weird disconnect between the educational system and what's happening in the real world. And I understand it is difficult even as a consumer to keep up to date with stuff, but so educational facilities must have a, a hell of a time. But the point is that there's this, there's this, there's this, um, uh, you know, this years, years of gap between what's happening and what is being taught and, 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 and being faced with too much, too much jargon and, 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 uh, um, and, 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 and technology that you don't understand, the technology, and wording that you don't understand, syntax and stuff, that's gonna throw you off, you know? It needs to be done in little bite-sized pieces. Each little piece needs to lead to something else and make it exciting for, for people, especially with children. So, um, you know, so gotta be sort of, sort of careful of that. I mean, and then the next thing that happens is, is uh, Pete the Elite and um, MJ Laukala were saying that they were in, um, in university and seeing people dropping off because it wasn't what they wanted to do. It was more focused towards the management side of stuff or sort of uninspired and out of date and, and boring, basically. Um, so even people who were doing like Minecraft mods and building all that kind of stuff, um, who were making money doing that, were then hit computer science at, at university and then dropped out because it wasn't what they wanted to do. So I think the key there is to keep it interesting for people. And you know, maybe you don't need to know everything about computer science. You just want to be able to make some code, make things happen, and seeing things happen will inspire you to keep going and to continue and to delve deeper into this stuff. So basically that I think is 
you know, that's interesting. That was my experience anyways. I mean, I was, you know, I had a Commodore 64 at home too. I was so excited about programming. And then, you know, it was just, it was just this, like, it was like going to another math class that I didn't, uh, that I wasn't excited about. And neither was the teacher. So uh, the next thing that comes up is no female coders. Why are there not more females in this? Why are there not girls interested in coding? A few people have mentioned this. Night Skies Dark was saying she got into coding when she was six or seven. So my son has no excuse. He must become a programmer now. Um, and uh, so thank you, Night Skies Dark, for that. Um, and, but she was saying she was so unimpressed by the lack of women in the industry and how sexist it is and how many sort of, it's just a male dominated field. And why is that? Because the reality is most women I know are far more logical and, and organized and structured in their thinking than many of the men, certainly me. I'm like, squirrel, you know, I'm completely distractible and, and unfocused. Um, so I don't understand why there's not more women doing this. And is it because we're not, we don't have, they don't have the role models. They don't have people who are, um, you know, uh, women to inspire them to do this stuff. And if not, we got to start doing that because that's, you know, that's, it's crazy that there aren't more women in this. Um, it's the same thing with the directing field as well. There should be more women directors than there are for some reason. I don't know what it is. It's, again, I think it's, it's just that, uh, you know, the, 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 I, don't, I, don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I think it's because there's not enough. Once there are more women in, in the director's chair and once there are more women programmers, perhaps there will be more women programmers because there's more sort of examples of people to sort of to, 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 to strive for. And uh, talking about that, um, uh, you know, Thyra was saying she's at an all-girls school. She's the only girl at the school who's into programming. I mean, that's just nuts. That should be, that, you know, there should be support. There should be some kind of online community for women in, in, in computers or, 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 and again, especially at a, at a school level, and a high school level, like instead, there's all these beauty tips and stuff on YouTube and there should be more girls programming. So I don't know how we do that. Um, we'll have to figure something out for that. But um, GW Brit keeps reminding me that I should, that I'm an idiot, that when I was in the UK, I should have talked to uh, Dr. Sue Black. Um, because she has, does this thing called Tech Moms, which again, very inspiring. Basically, there's a woman who was, like, had three kids at 25 and um, by 25 and was on her own and living in like council housing. And she realized that technology was the answer to turn her life around. And she did. And she's now like, you know, she's a university graduate, PhDs and, and, and talking and inspiring people. And, 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 and basically technology, she's saying, is available. It's such a ready, available tool to people that they need, that these moms need to learn how to do it. And um, you know, it is the way out for many, many people, and it's an affordable way out. Like, it doesn't have to be expensive. A couple of people were complaining about they couldn't go to university because it was too expensive. So the reality is there's so many resources out there, which I'm hoping to get to um, at the end of this video. So how and when to teach the kids coding, great things that were brought up by um, uh, Rowan Charlesworth and Roddy F. They said, look, we teach languages to kids young because that's when it they can retain these things. Um, uh, why don't we teach computer programming? It's a language. It's a language. It's a way of speaking to computers. Why don't we learn that at the same time? I mean, maybe not to, you know, we're not going to teach them Java right away, but I mean, just let's get them, get this stuff, the structure, the idea of, of programming into their minds and into their into their dreams and their excitement now, and it'll it'll just do it'll just pay off in droves later on. So, uh, I just thought those were two really really good points. Thank uh, two 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 separate comments that made the same point, which I thought were very were very smart. The next one was Tamara Cole, who says she teaches kids programming and she does it by making peanut butter and jam sandwiches. So of course she had me at peanut butter, um, but basically the idea is that she says like, how do you break down the process of making a peanut butter sandwich for kids in such a way that they, that it makes sense to a computer? So basically how take that, that those things and break them down into all the little tiny steps necessary to end up with a peanut butter sandwich. I just thought it was such a great example of how to teach kids programming. Um, so now, programming resources. I'm going to put all of these into a list at the end um, of, uh, of the description here, uh, but let me just run through them. Scratch. Uh, Jana Oracle, who's great at commenting, thank you, Jana, um, uh, was saying, what is Scratch? And it's basically, it's like a, it's a programming language, um, but, it's, but it's also sort of tied uh, inextricably to the community of kids sharing the stuff that they make on the stuff at the same time. It's sort of a community, a programming community for kids. And they can make little interactive games or, or, or presentations and they can share them and, and inspire each other. And it's just, it is, it's great. And it's just a drag and drop. You have these little sort of shapes of code that you drag in and you can create um, all sorts of things with that. It's an amazing resource. Definitely check that out. Code Academy, thank, I don't know who it was who suggested this. I don't have the, the names here, but whoever it was, there were a few of you. Thank you so much because it's brilliant. Like it's an online interactive learn how to program course. And I'm, I'm completely enthralled in it. And and, and we'll probably never see you again because it's just it's it's incredibly exciting. I've I've played with things like Udacity before, which was more of the sort of the university side of stuff, and they have a great computer science course, which was free as well, which I was sort of dabbling with. And of course, Lynda.com is another big favorite of mine. That is a 
that's a pay per month service. But if you want tutorials, if you want just guarantee, you know you're going to get the tar tutorials you need taught by people who know how to do it. It's a great, it's a great service. So I, I would, I would highly recommend them. Um, uh, Kieran Downey, hello, Kieran. Um, he suggests Game Maker because it's more specific to games and it, um, it deals with more like the C programming, which is a great basis for stuff. So he'll go into classes and um, he'll do like a, a tutorial game, like you know Fruit Ninja or uh, uh, or Pong or Mario Brothers and um, or Mario, and basically. Um, He'll then say, okay, now you make your own version of that. And he says the kids just run with it. They love it. It's a great way in. So again, games you know, are fantastic. The game, games are the gateway uh, to, to programming, it seems. Um, Majoric uh, recommends Space Chem, which looks incredible. I saw the tutorial for it. It's basically you take these little atoms and you have to create compounds out of them and reactions and, and program them to do things. And it's, uh, it's I mean, they're imaginary uh, uh, elements and stuff. But... But it just seems like a game that would be very good at teaching the way to think uh, programmatically. And um, uh, so I'm looking forward to, to, to playing with that as well. I would, I would highly suggest that someone check that out. And if they do, let me know what their experience is with it because it looks, it looks amazing. And then I am Vazen suggests Unity. And of course, Unity is a brilliant suggestion because it's using so many things. I think actually the game that I was involved in, Oddworld, was also a Unity um, engine as well. Um, and my friend who was uh, holidaying with us in Tuscany, he, he plays with Unity as well. So Unity is, yes, fantastic. There's a million tutorials out there. It just seems like a great resource for, for gaming as well. Um, and, uh, and finally, on that one, there was James Gamble who suggested Play My Code, which I haven't had a chance to play with. But basically, it's like a sandbox for these um, for, for programs. So basically, you throw these games up there and people can add things and take away things. And they, you can all sort of work on the same programs and stuff. Um, and it's just, again, just a great sort of coding community, which uh, looks like it could be fun. And it has a asteroids at the beginning, which, which I really like. Of course, it gets me right into it. So, and then finally, everything in moderation. Um, the... Um, uh, 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 Hitokage, Hitokage Productions and Dinah K. Smith, uh, both of whom are great at commenting. Thank you so much for that. Um, they remind us not to overdo it, that we can't have our heads buried in the computers the whole time. We must get outside into that real world um, and make our differences and, uh, and, um, and, uh, uh, and, and, and affect that world as well because it's incredibly inspiring and it's true. Even you know, when you're writing and you're holed up in a room for a while, it's great to get out, walk the dog, grab a coffee and that will inspire you and will open things up for you because sometimes we can be a little myopic about this stuff, especially with programming and writing um, and YouTubing, I guess. Um, and oh, I've missed one. I've, I've missed one. Oh yeah, big, big shout out to Kalina45 because she saw this thing called uh, GameBot School and then she went back to research it for us because she was so, so intrigued and thought it would, uh, it would appeal to me. So she looked all that up. Thank you so much for that. That's above and beyond. Um, it's called GameBotSchool.com and it's basically like, it's, it's just computer camps for kids and it does everything from Unity to um, Corona Software Development Kit for, uh, for, the, uh, for the iPhone, the iPad and stuff and also JavaScript, also, they basically teach everything, but it's for kids and I'm so jealous because I wish I could go myself. So again, thank you Kalina45 for, for following up on that and getting back to me. Um, and to everybody, honestly, because the amount of information you guys have provided is invaluable. It's incredible. And that's why I want to do this follow-up Friday so that I could basically get this information out to everybody and wave my hands around and show how excited I am about it because it is amazing and you are amazing and um, uh, I am I am so uh, I'm so jazzed by this. I mean, I just think this is this is going to go somewhere. Um, so this is a great way I think to sort of get do my follow up Fridays and also just to this is fanatic airs. This is about us changing the world, and you guys are already doing it, and that's uh, just so incredible to to hear. And it's uh, it's going to start my weekend off very well. So until we geek again, cheerio.